Hi, my name is Sam Hutton, and I'm the tomato breeder at the University of Florida, located at the Gulf Coast Research and Education Center. And I wanted to talk to you, with you today about some of our breeding approaches that we're employing to develop tomatoes for mechanical harvest. So with me today is Leo Gaspar. Leo is a new PhD student in my lab, and he's working on a few of the aspects of this research project. Uh, Leo, you joined my lab in spring of last year, of 2020, uh, and you came in with a lot of experience in plant breeding already. Um, so what's your background in? Hello, I'm Leo. I'm from the Philippines, and my professional training is on rice breeding. I have about 15 years of uh, hybrid uh, experience in hybrid product development for Philippines and Southeast Asia. All right, so um, coming out of rice breeding, um, What's impressed you so far about the differences in tomato and rice, just in terms of scale and in terms of cost? Well, in Louisiana, it costs around $600 to grow a, an acre of rice. And I believe the cost is closer to 10,000 per acre uh, for tomato. As for plant numbers, I would typically look at uh, 100,000 per acre for uh, rice trials. Wow, wow. Okay, so in tomato, we're looking at about uh, 4,000 plants per acre, maybe, um, out here in the fields, and not nearly the numbers that you would be growing with rice. It's just so much more cost. Um, so then uh, you actually, I believe you, you were doing a PhD at Louisiana State University, and then you heard about my breeding program here, um, the successes we were having. I was, I was a great guy to work for, and so you decided to stop your PhD there and come and join my program, um, if I remember that correctly. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, I was in my second year uh, at LSU, but I had never actually uh, heard about your program. I decided to uh, come to Tampa because my wife started a position in the area, and uh, joining your program uh, will go a long way as far as my uh, professional development as a plant breeder is concerned. Okay. All right. Well, that wasn't quite the answer I was looking for. Um, your your degree may take a little bit longer than the typical four-year uh, PhD project. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, if I gave, if I were to give an overview of this breeding project, where we're trying to develop mechanically harvested tomatoes for fresh market, um, I guess I would emphasize a few things. One is um, we're primarily using the brachytic gene for uh, achieving compact growth habit, right? So the brachytic gene results in shortened inner nodes, and you end up with a little bit more of a bush that sits on top of the plastic versus a vine that keeps growing um, that needs to be staked and tied. So we're trying to grow without stakes, without stringing the tomatoes up. Um, and in that system, we're trying to maximize yield under a once over harvest. Um, a couple other things we're working with are improving the level of fruit firmness we're playing with some other genetics for plant habit, upright versus prostrate growth habit. We're definitely trying to utilize the jointless two gene for achieving uh, stem free harvest. Um, that gene is easy enough to select for and to breed for, but it's really challenging because there's some, uh, a lot of fruit defects that you get when you start working with jointless materials that are large fruited. So breeding against those uh, defects is a major component of this project. And then of course, trying to introduce the needed disease resistances that are important for our growing area. Uh, your project, Leo, I believe encompasses a couple of these aspects. Uh, yes, uh, my dissertation research is focused on looking at the genetics of fruit firmness and uh, the prostrate and upright uh, growth habit. All right, so uh, with regard to that fruit firmness, um, one might ask uh, why we have varieties right now growers are producing them successfully they have uh, sufficient levels of fruit firmness why are you trying to improve that well uh, even though this effort is uh, aiming at a mature green harvest similar to what um, growers are currently doing we are now working towards a once over mechanical harvest and in this situation the timing of harvest uh, will have to be adjusted in order to maximize yield and fruit size. And because of this, it will be unavo unavoidable for some of the earliest fruit to be red or ripening. So our goal with improving fruit firmness is simply to minimize the proportion of this fruit 
that would be damaged or and therefore called. Okay, okay. So try not to leave um, uh, all of those red or ripening fruit in the field due to damage. Okay. Yes. So what's some of the work that you're doing with regard to fruit firmness? Yes, so um, so the way we are measuring fruit firmness is uh, with a penetrometer. So we are using this uh, instrument to apply a one kilogram force onto a red ripe uh, fruit, and then we measure the resulting deformation. deformation. So uh, the softer the fruit, the greater the deformation. And the graph on the left shows some of the preliminary data that I have collected. All right, so I'm looking at that graph. I can see to the right-hand side, we've got some commercial varieties there. I see Sanibel, uh, HM 1823. I see Tasty Lee in there. Um, and they all seem to have fairly high deformation uh, on this graph. That, that doesn't seem too good. Uh, well, uh, these have acceptable levels of fruit firmness for the current uh, harvesting practices, but we are interested in, in improving this. So where you see the deformation is around uh, 3.5 to 4 uh, millimeters uh, in the commercial checks and in the soft parent, uh, you can also see much less uh, deformation in the firm materials. And uh, I am working with those uh, on, the, on, the left of the, on the left of the graph. Okay. Okay. I see. So, so maybe we don't have a control that's a particularly soft parent, like uh, heirloom level of softness, but that might be even higher than the three and a half to four range. Yeah. Okay. So we're also working on the genetics of prostrate and upright growth habit. Now, our observations over the years are that prostrate growth habit leads to a more spreading bush, one that typically covers the entire bed surface and an upright growth habit typically results in more of a bush that grows vertically um, until the weight of the fruit causes it to fall over to one side or another. And you can, you can see this in the pictures here. You see the prostrate uh, where we've removed the leaves from the plants. You see the prostrate vine on the left of each picture, upright vine or vines on the right of each, each picture, right? Yeah. Do you know which one uh, of these growth habits will be best for this system? Um, well, the, the short answer is no. We don't know which of these would work best for mechanical harvest. Um, you could think of it in, uh, from two perspectives. From a mechanical harvest perspective, uh, the machine may be able to get the plants off the plastic better with one type of vine or the other, perhaps the upright vine, right? From a production standpoint, uh, we can see that we, can, we run into problems sometimes. The prostrate vines are more open, the canopy coverage seems to be less, and you see a little bit more sun scalding and cracking and things. So we may have some uh, fruit marketability issues if we go with a prostrate vine. And it may be that a hybrid between the two is the ideal uh, for deploying something for this, for this purpose. All right, so we're currently working with both types and, and hoping to make headway there. So how are you approaching the problem with your research? So during the last fall, I used a digital angled ruler to measure branch angle. And that's the angle between the main stem and the side branches. For, and we did that for parents, F1s, and approximately 500 uh, F2 plants. And we did this for four uh, populations. So, yeah, what uh, we observe is that the prostrate habit resulted in a higher uh, branch angle. The upright habit resulted in a lower uh, branch angle, and the F1s were intermediate, but it is uh, much closer to being upright. And the data so far uh, suggests that this trait is controlled by a single major gene, and that this gene has uh, partial dominance, meaning that hybrids are uh, intermediate. And the next step for this project uh, will be to locate the controlling gene and uh, study how this trade impacts uh, canopy coverage and especially uh, fruit marketability. Okay, well, that'll be really great. I'll, I'm looking forward to working with a single gene versus uh, a trait controlled by many genes. Yeah. So we're down to the last couple of slides and I just wanted to show some video to illustrate the importance of this jointless pedestal trait. All right, so obviously this is not a mechanical harvest, but if it were, if you imagine a machine coming through and shaking fruit from these plants. Notice all the stems that are left on those fruit. 
on the left on this jointed variety. Uh, in contrast, notice the uh, mostly stem-free harvest that you get with that jointless pedicel trait introduced. Right? So this would be really, really important if we, as we transition away from hand harvest and move towards a machine harvest where you don't have workers taking those stems off before loading them into bins and gondolas. And this picture is just to illustrate um, the direction we're trying to go. Okay, we're taking these uh, traditional varieties like you see on the left and on the right, and we're trying to achieve a smaller plant stature. You see that in the middle with our advanced selection. We want jointless pedicels for the stem-free harvest. We want a high yield with a once over harvest, and we want maximum fruit to be mature at the same time. We want a concentrated fruit setting, concentrated fruit maturity, uh, so we can maximize the marketable yields in that scenario with a machine harvest. So with that, I'll just wrap things up. Um, thank you for joining me. I wanted to acknowledge those folks in my lab. They get the work done for me. Um, I've got a tremendous team working for me. I'm really thankful for them. Leo, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for your help on this project. All right, now the work here was supported by uh, former grants from the Specialty Crop Block Grants Program through the Florida Department of Ag and Consumer Services, as well as by continued support from the Florida Tomato Committee. Thank you for your time.